How's it going everybody? This is RBT coming at you with another top 10 position breakdown for the 2013 NFL Draft. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down my top 10 running backs for the 2013 NFL Draft. So let's get started. Starting the countdown at number 10, we have Marcus Lattimore, the junior coming out of South Carolina, and we all know what happened to him. Terrible story, but he's 6 foot, 220 pounds, finished the season in 9 games, 143 attempts rushing, 662 yards, 4.6 yards per carry, and 11 touchdowns in only 9 games. And we all know how his season ended. Tragic, tragic way. But by far, regardless of injury, he is the best running back talent in this draft. And some NFL team will be willing to take a shot at him. In my opinion, he is the best running back in the last four years to come out of college. That is not named Trent Richardson. And like I said, we all know the questions surrounding his health. Second straight year, he missed the season, or the majority of the season, with a significant knee injury. And he might be held out of contact for a year, maybe even longer than a year. So that's really going to make some NFL teams want to know if he's worth the risk. But trust me, with this guy's talent, he's definitely worth the risk. I mean, running backs as of late, with all the medical research, with all the new things they're putting into rehab, whatnot, running backs are coming off of significant knee injuries quicker and healthier than ever. And I mean, this guy... He has all the talent in the world. He's a role model. I hate to see somebody like him go down. I mean, he's he's a classy kid. He's a great kid. I mean, I, I mean, everybody in the country's pull, pulling for him to come back. He's a low risk, high reward player. Hopefully, he'll have a Willis McGahee type recovery, come back stronger than he was. Maybe even considered to a Adrian Peterson type recovery. I mean, as a running back, he's just a complete hammer. He displays tremendous power, great vision. He has great speed. He protects the ball. He has all the things you want to run a back. And for that reason, I think some team hat picks him near the end of the draft. I have him projected going in the seventh round of this NFL draft. Dropping in at number nine, I have Ray Graham, the senior coming out of Pitt, who's 5'9", 192 pounds. His senior season, he had 222 carries for 1,042 yards, which is a 4.7 yard per carry average. He scored 11 touchdowns. And this is also another guy who has had the injury bug hit him earlier in his career he played his best versus Notre Dame and that's saying something because despite the national championship game Notre Dame played very good run defense all throughout the season and in that game he had 172 yards on 44 carries so he plays good against good competition despite playing good against good competition he is undersized sitting at 5'9 192 pounds there are question marks surrounding his durability he missed most of 2011 with an ACL tear he does display excellent lateral agility when healthy. He has a, the ability to make defenders look absolutely silly in open space. Despite being known for his shiftiness, he carries a load in lo a lot and is considered a workhorse. I mean, this guy's the third straight running back out of Pitt who's been very, very great and successful, pretty successful in the NFL. LaShawn McCoy, we don't know how great he is. Deion Lewis is also a very reliable back in the NFL, so he has the ability to be a very good running back in the NFL which we'll has to see if he can add a little bit extra bulk on his frame and maybe he can stay healthy but just as of late he was charged with a misdemeanor for assault he and a few other of his friends had struck a student near campus so this might have a few NFL scouts questioning his maturity I mean you're entering the NFL draft and you're missing your draft stock up by doing silly stupid things like this so he might drop a little bit because of something like this, but he does have great ability, and I think some team will pick him near the sixth round. So I have Ray Graham going early in the sixth round in this 2013 NFL Draft. Coming in at number eight, I have Jawan Jabison, the redshirt sophomore coming out of Rutgers. Actually, is the only sophomore running back to come out of this year's draft class. He is 5'8", 200 pounds. This year, he had 255 attempts rushing. 1,075 yards, which turns out to be a 4.2 yard per carry average, which is a little bit lower than he expected, and he only had four touchdowns this whole entire season, so that's a little question mark for NFL scouts. He had a strong start to the season. He had 100 yards each game to start the year in his first five games, but he only had one 100-yard game in his last seven games, so he kind of tailed off there at the end of the season, and he only had one rushing touchdown his last seven games, so that's something, another thing that NFL scouts will be wondering about. I mean, looking at his tape, he has tremendous vision, great balance, and has the gift to make people miss in the open field. He runs great between tackles and is a nice receiving threat out of the backfield. He's also considered a workhorse. He runs the ball many, many times for Rutgers. 
he is small at 5'8", and I was trying to figure out somebody to compare him to, so I was looking around on the internet trying to find all the comparisons to him, and the one comparison that did stand out to me was Ray Rice, and that makes so much sense. They're about the same size, both from Rutgers, so that makes more sense than anything else in the world, so best possible comparison for Jawan Jameson is to Ray Rice. He does lack top-end speed. He doesn't really trust his blocks as well as he needs to, but he's a great talent. He, he's a punisher, so I believe some NFL team will give him a shot near the late fifth round, so my draft projection for Jawan Jameson is late fifth round for this 2013 NFL draft. Coming in at number seven, we have Joseph Randall, the junior, coming out of Oklahoma State, sitting at six foot, two hundred pounds flat. He had two hundred seventy-four attempts rushing this year, a thousand four hundred seventeen yards. That gives him a five point two yard per carry average, putting up fourteen touchdowns this season. So he had a very good season, very productive season in the spread attack at Oklahoma State, ran by Mike Gundy. He presents excellent acceleration, tremendous burst of speed. He has, like I said, he has breakaway speed. But he does have to transition into a pro-style type of offense to fit most NFL teams as he's been in a spread attack most of his career at Oklahoma State. Well, all of his career at Oklahoma State, be it at that. He has outstanding vision, but I think to take on an NFL workload to be an NFL starter, he does need to add a little bit more muscle to his frame. He's only 200 pounds and he's six foot, so I say another 10 pounds add to his frame and he should be okay to carry an NFL load. And he might end up being a change of pace back, but I think, like I said, if he adds a little bit more to his frame, he could be a starter in the NFL. And he also has good hands, so that's always a plus. And my projection for Joseph Randall is mid-fifth round in this 2013 NFL draft. Dropping in at number six, we have Andre Ellington, the redshirt senior coming out of Clemson University. He's sitting at 5'9", 195 pounds, so he's a bit of a smaller back. His senior season at Clemson, he had 212 attempts rushing, 1,081 yards, 5.1 yard per carry average, and he also had eight touchdowns on the ground. And as we know, at Clemson, they run a spread offense, so he was running a little bit more east to west than he needed to to get ready for an NFL type of offense. So he didn't get as many looks as he needed out of the eye formation, etc., to be ready for an NFL type of offense. So it will be a tough transition for him to a spread attack at Clemson to an NFL team. Out of my top 10, I do think he is the fastest back in my top 10. He's not a power back, as you can tell from his size. He struggles to break tackles. He has great patience following blocks. He's very quick, has great vision, great cutting ability, everything you want in a scat type of back, very fast. I'm just not sure he's ready to prove himself as an NFL inside type back. If he wants to prove himself as an inside type back, he does need to add a little bit to his frame, much like Joseph Randall at Oklahoma State. Maybe another 15 pounds if possible, but I'm not sure if he'd want to add the 15 pounds and take a risk at becoming an inside back. With the possibility of losing some of his top end speed, that would help him utilize his skills to the best of his ability and to help whatever team he gets drafted by be more successful. He needs to improve on pass protection. I believe he'll end up being just a change of pace back in the NFL. And I have Andre Ellington going in the early to mid fourth round in this 2013 NFL draft. Coming in at number five, we have Stephon Taylor, the senior coming out of Stanford, sitting at 5'11", 215 pounds. His senior season at Stanford had 322 attempts rushing, 1,530 yards, and that gives him a 4.8 yard per carry average, along with 13 rushing touchdowns on the season. He's a three-year starter at Stanford, and Stanford comes with a great line of amazing running backs, last known for Toby Gerhardt. So to be a three-year starter at Stanford, you have to be pretty good. Stephon Taylor, with his frame, he's built low to the ground, hits the hole very quickly. He has a great initial burst. He's not afraid of contact. He protects the football fumbles at a minimum. has great hands. He doesn't always trust his blockers, so that does kind of hurt him. He can't always find his cutback lane, so that can be tend to him being a little indecisive on when to cut back and when to hit the hole at the best possible time. He does lack the one elite attribute, but in all the possible attributes for a, a NFL-style running back, he is solid in all of them. Like I said, he just lacks the elite phase. And for my projection for Stephon Taylor, I have him going mid to late third round in this 2013 NFL draft. Sitting at number four in my top ten, we have Monte Ball, the all-time FBS touchdown leader. Senior coming out of Wisconsin, 5'11", 215 pounds, his senior season at Wisconsin. Had 356 attempts rushing, 1,830 yards, which gives him a 5.1 yard per carry average. His whole entire career at Wisconsin, he's been a touchdown machine. 
hence the all-time FBS touchdown leader record that he holds. In the last two years, he had 55 touchdowns. 33 of those touchdowns came last year with the help of such a great offensive line, but he's shown this year coming back with only two offensive line starters returning that he got 22 of those touchdowns pretty much on his own. So he's shown he he's no matter what going to be a great running back. He has so many great attributes to his game. He hits the line very fast. He has great vision, does not go down easily, fights for every bit of yardage that he can get. He's very patient with his offensive line, so if he can go to a NFL team with a great run-blocking offensive line, that can only lead to good things. He lacks explosiveness in traffic. He lacks the home run ability threat, and that's pretty much the only negative on Monte Ball. And for my projection for Monte Ball in the 2013 NFL Draft, I have him going in the early third round. Dropping in at number three, we have Le'Veon Bell, the junior out of Michigan State. Sitting at 6'2", 245 pounds, his, his junior season at Michigan State, 382 rushing attempts, 1,793 yards, which gives him a 4.7 yard per carry average with 12 touchdowns on the ground. And as we know, he's a very, very good hurdler. He used the hurdling move many, many times throughout the season. And I'm not sure how that projects the next level, but that can only be a positive as he's very, very athletic with his size. So... He's an old-style type of back. He just pounces the rock. He just mauls over people. I mean, he won't be able to do that as much at the next level, but with his size, with his athletic ability, he'll be able to do that no matter where he is. Just might not be as effective in the NFL as it was in college. Like I said, he's a pounded-out type of running back. He's a complete workhorse. Multiple times this year, he ran the ball 40-plus times in a game, so that's unheard of. He won't be able to do that at the next level, but... With, given the fact that he's done that shows you his durability because he's not really been hurt a significant amount at Michigan State. He does lack breakaway speed. That is kind of assumed, though, with his size at 245 pounds. He is, in fact, the biggest running back definitely in this whole entire draft class. He is considered by many to be too big, but, I mean, that can only be a positive for a running back. I mean, in NFL, you don't necessarily have to be the fastest guy. You just have to be able to grind out yards. And with his size and the athletic ability... He will be able to do that. I don't think he's too big, like I said. Uh, he's not afraid of contact. He always falls forward and gains, just just like Monte Ball, gains as many yards as he possibly can. Just grinds out every single possible yard. He can run over defenders, but for some reason, even though he's not the fastest guy in the world, he does tend to run east to west too much. So if he can fix it out and always continue to run north-south, I believe he will be a starter in the NFL and I have him going in the early third round in this 2013 NFL Draft. Coming in at number two on my list, we have Giovanni Bernard, the redshirt senior coming out of North Carolina, sitting at 5'10", 210 pounds. This season he had 184 rushing attempts, 1,228 yards, which gives him a 6.7 yard per carry average, which is amazing. 12 touchdowns on the ground as well. He's also an amazing receiving threat out of the backfield with 47 catches, catches 490 yards, and 5 touchdowns. He would have been a 2013 Heisman candidate if he stayed for this year, but he decided it's best for him to come out, and he actually committed initially to North Carolina with Butch Davis. That's before they got Larry Fedora. They ran a pro-style offense, so that's what he wanted to run, and then Larry Fedora comes in and runs a spread-style type of attack, and apparently it worked out quite well for him. He's built low to the ground. He runs with great power. Despite playing in the spread at UNC, I do think he projects as a very well, very good running back in a pro style of offense in the NFL. He has great vision, great balance. He does have questions surrounding his durability. He only missed two full games this season, but he missed a lot of action here and there, just nagging injuries, injuries popping up here and there. So his durability is a question, and he did, in fact, miss the whole entire season in 2012 with a torn ACL. So... That's also a question there. He does lack top-level speed, but with all the other attributes that he has, just a complete running back, despite not having the breakaway speed. Like I, but like I said before, in the NFL, you don't necessarily have to have 4-4 four, four speed. You just have to be a running back that can ground out yards, 4 or 5 yards of carry, and you'll be set for life. <laughs> so with my projection in the 2013 NFL Draft, I have Giovanni Bernard going mid-second round. And finally, topping off my list at number one, we have Eddie Lacy, the redshirt junior, coming out of the University of Alabama, sitting at 5'10", 225 pounds, 
He had 204 attempts rushing, 1,322 yards, 17 touchdowns, which gives him a 6.5 yard per carry average. Those stats might have been increased a little bit, but he did split time with TJ Yeldon, and some might want to say that his stats were enhanced by the offensive line of Alabama, which arguably is the best offensive line in the history of college football. But, I mean, if you look at the guy, how he played against Notre Dame, etc., he's just an amazing running back. He has one of the best spin moves I've ever seen. One of the, probably the best spin move I've seen in the past decade, definitely. And uh, he runs with great power. He can run right over defenders. He's very shifty for a guy of his size. So that's just something that projects very well at the next level. He can run over defenders, like I said, similar to Trent Richardson. He has national running skills built with an NFL-ready frame. He has amazing lateral agility, like I said, with that frame. Great vision. But in previous seasons, he has been injury prone. He has injuries, kind of like Giovanni Bernard here and there. He did play through many injuries. He had a problem with turf, turf toe last year. And he did stay healthy for the majority of the year this year, but that was just one year, so we can see how it happens in years to come. But I, the reason I have Eddie Lacy number one is he's just the most complete running back in this draft that this draft is made up of many running backs that possibly can be great. There's not that one elite back. There's not that one first-round back. But there's a bunch of backs that you can possibly see being very good in the league. So we'll see how that turns out. But my projection for Eddie Lacy, I have him going early second round in this 2013 NFL draft. So that wraps it up, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please leave a comment in the comment section below with your top 10 running backs for the next NFL draft. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate when you guys leave me a like. I hope you guys are looking forward to the rest of this series. I think next I have a wider series coming out. This video takes a very long time to make. It's actually 1230 at night. So this is the second straight night where I stayed up very late. I have to wake up soon. So hopefully you enjoyed me taking a little bit of time out of my day to make this video for you. So thanks guys for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Roll Tide, Go Sox, and Go Titans to you. I'll see you guys later. Have a great night.